Hello and welcome, welcome to LACO, our very first talk on this channel. You can now look forward to a whole talk series in which we will present a different LACO watch every time. Today we'll start with the Frankfurt GMT and how this watch wins us over with its inner workings and which additional features are also on board. That's what we're going to talk about after the intro. I'm glad to welcome the LACO managing director himself, Mr. Uwe Rücke. Good to have you here. Hello. When it comes to LACO, you're exactly the right person to talk to. So I am very happy that you're here. As I just mentioned, today we're going to talk about the Frankfurt GMT. GMT watches are essentially nothing new. They've been on the market for a very long time and allow us to display three time zones. That's quite handy for frequent travelers, but also for private daily use in a global world, if you have friends or family in another time zone. In fact, LACO is actually well known for its pilot watches. You've been managing director for seven years now. How did the GMT actually come about? We're in close contact with our customers and we're always happy to hear from our customers what they like about our products and how they see us and where there may still be room for improvement. And fairly often the phrase, why don't you make a GMT watch? You don't have a GMT watch, it's missing in your collection, came up. And of course, we did take that to heart and asked ourselves what a LACO GMT watch should look like. We then put a lot of LACO DNA into the model. So from our point of view, it's immediately clear that it has to be a LACO. And now we have a GMT watch in our portfolio as well. Exactly which has been on the market for three years now. It is still rather new to the LACO family, but stands out especially because it is not a typical GMT watch. We have several elements here that are special features. We will go into more detail about that in a moment. However, we can already say that it has a very distinctive stainless steel case with an internal rotating bezel, two screw-down crowns, an automatic movement, the Calibre LACO 330, additional magnetic field protection, which we will talk some more about in a moment, and, which is also quite interesting, a 40 plus hour reserve. And the outcome is definitely something to be proud of. It has also received a fine award, the Red Dot Award 2020 for product design. So here the watch was able to score points with function and design as well. Also a wonderful compliment. We were also very pleased that we received an award like this and that our thoughts obviously went in the right direction with it. Let's take a closer look at the watch now. Here we see a distinctive stainless steel case that comes with a sandblasted look, which is also a distinguishing feature at LACO. Maybe you could tell us some more about that. Yes, it's that typical LACO grey blasted finish, where the watches give a matte grey surface impression even though they're completely made of stainless steel. They're not coated or painted, but they're blasted in a special way so that they develop this matte grey finish. And that is very typical of LACO. It was already typical of LACO back in the 30s and 40s that the pilot watches had this matte grey finish so that they wouldn't be reflective as to not be distracting. Today's original LACO pilot watch watches still have this grey finish. Of course, we wanted to take that into account with this watch, so that the watch would fit nicely into the history of LACO with its DNA, so to speak, into the LACO collection and would be recognizable at first glance as a LACO pilot watch, even if it's a GMT in this case. It is also important to know that the watch has a diameter of 43 millimeters or 50 millimeters lug to lug and 12.5 millimeters in height. 43 millimeters seems rather big at first. You have the watch on your wrist right now, you'll be able to judge that well. Well, it feels much smaller on your arm than the number has you think. Many customers who try the watch are surprised that they can wear a 43mm watch because some have their limits set somewhere around 42, 41. But the watch feels smaller than the number actually indicates. And many, as I said, are very happy with a watch that exceeds their normal size needs. So just try it out. Another distinguishing feature feature for LACO is the beveled bezel, which is the slanted edge on the case. It is not straight nor rounded, it is deliberately slanted. 
That's typical LACO. The LACO pilot watch, back then also, already had the bevel on the bezel. And all our pilot watches typically have this beveled bezel. And with the GMT, it was important to us that we retain these typical features of a LACO watch, including the beveled bezel. And that's why we went for the internal rotating bezel. The bezel is divided into two colors, one half in gray for the daytime range from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and the other half in black for the night, so that you can instantly tell whether it's day or night in the second or third time zone. It's important to note that the bezel can be adjusted in half-hour steps. There is a very specific thought behind that, isn't there? Exactly. There are indeed time zones that are not on the hour, but on the half hour. And in order to take these time zones into account as well, you have to manage a half hour grid in some form. And because the movement doesn't have a half hour grid, but an hour grid, we put the half hour grid in the bezel. The bezel can be turned via the crown and you can feel a slight ratcheting in the finger in the half hour. So that you know exactly, now I'm in the right place. Two grid steps make one hour. One grid step is a half hour. So that you can see, am I on the half hour or on the hour? But I can also feel it in the fingers that I now have the setting exactly where I want it. A very big advantage is, of course, that the ring does not rotate freely but locks in place so that you can set the time very precisely. The dial is based on the shape of the type A model, the Arabic numerals at 3 and 9 o'clock, and the classic pilot watch triangle at the 12. And the hands are also based on the shape of the A model with a rhombus arrow shape. What is behind this? This is a typical hand shape, also from the 30s and 40s pilot watches. Back then, you had to be able to tell at first glance what the minute hand and the hour hand is. And you had to be able to distinguish them precisely from one another. In addition, it was possible to mount a very wide frame over the shape, which could be filled with luminous material inside. We still do that the same way today. These are frame hands, thermally blued, that is steel hands that are heated and then turn blue so that the surface passivates and cannot rust or change further. And these thermally blued hands are then filled with luminous material in the area in the center. This makes them very clearly visible, very recognizable, because they have a nice surface and glow in the dark. Exactly. And here we have the C3 Superluminova, considered to be one of the brightest varieties. This simply means that it has good luminous properties at night, meaning it shines bright for long periods of time. What catches my eye is the GMT hand. This one doesn't have a classic snowflake and isn't straight, which is actually what you usually see on the other GMT watches. It also has an aviator triangle. Exactly. It is once again a frame pointer to save weight, but still has as large of a recognizable area as possible, which is hollow in this case. So it's not filled with C3 mass, but only the frame shines, and thus you can A, see very well, and B, also see very well where it's positioned. Exactly, and the color orange was chosen deliberately. Red would not have been as suitable because we know that in the cockpits, the color red is considered a warning. That would have been counterproductive. Orange has good luminous properties, is very opaque and also fits well within the color family as a whole. This gray color is exactly the same gray as the case and also as one half of the bezel. How about your black dial? It doesn't cover up anything because everything can shine through. For me, as you said, the dial is the black one, which is much darker and offers a little stronger contrast to the hands. But in the end, it's an aesthetic decision of what you'd rather have. A darker dial or a lighter dial and whether the dial should blend in with the case a bit more unobtrusively or stand out a bit more in contrast. But we can also choose the color of the bracelets. Here we have the textile strap in grey and orange, but it is also available in black and orange. Or, for example, the leather strap which you're wearing right now. Yes, that's Nitec. It looks like leather, but it's not leather. It's waterproof. Since the watch comes with 20 atmospheres, even has a water resistance of 200 meters, it makes sense to attach a water resistance strap, and that's why we opted for the black Nitec strap for this. You have just addressed another important point. It is waterproof to 20 bar which might also be of interest to some people when buying. While one might pay more attention to the appearance, the other might focus more on function and water resistance. That way you don't need to worry if you happen to be underwater with the watch. 
And because the back is screwed down, the bezel is screwed down, and both crowns are screwed down, we were able to create a very high waterproofness, thereby making the watch very suitable for everyday use. Untypical for a pilot watch, but just very typical for an everyday watch that you wear for hobbies, for sports, even for water sports maybe, or in the office. We should also point out that the crowns are atypical. We have two screwed down crowns, which have a crown guard on the left and right. If you happened to accidentally hit the edge of the table with your wrist, the crowns would be damaged. That doesn't happen here unless the crowns are not screwed back in properly. That is an important thing to keep in mind. Due to the fact that the crowns are screwed down, they sink a little into the crown guard. And when the crowns are screwed out, they stick out a little bit and can then be moved. The lower one is for the movement and the upper one for the rotating bezel. The crown sticks out a little further out when it's screwed out and must always be screwed in. So put a little pressure on the outside of the crown and then turn it slightly. And as a result, the watch is waterproof again. Here we have a typical aviator crown. Some people may also refer to it as an onion crown. Around the entire crown is the knurling, which simply makes the whole thing more grippy. Right. Quite typical also for a pilot watch, a very grippy crown, which in the past also had to be operated with gloves. It is just pleasant to move, especially if you use a crown more often, such as the crown on the rotating bezel. Then it is pleasant to have a good feeling that you have the crown properly in your hand. Let's move on to the sapphire crystal, which is also typical for the other Laco watches. It is known for the extreme hardness of the glass, which is curved on the inside and the outside. You can also buy the watch with anti-reflective coating on both sides. The standard is anti-reflective on the inside. There are fans of a purely interior anti-reflective coating. There are also fans for an anti-reflective coating on both sides. And getting the cambering with the same radii right in the first place is also enormously complex. We made it optional so that everyone can buy according to their preference from us. As a result, sapphire crystals quickly become pretty expensive if you have double domed crystals in that thickness. It is also special that the watch has a magnetic field protection. That's not the case with all watches. You can think of it like a lightning rod, right? Basically, yes. It is like a Faraday cage that is built around the movement. Made of soft iron, it ensures that magnetic fields cannot hit the movement and thus cannot magnetize the movement. A magnetized movement would have the disadvantage that the elements of the movement are magnetized to different degrees and then attract or repel each other, which of course would greatly affect the accuracy of the watch. You can considerably reduce the issue via the magnetic field protection. It is not impossible to have an impact with a very strong magnetic field, but you can keep the typical magnetic fields in everyday life away quite well with it, and thus keep the accuracy of the watch pretty much at the level in which the watch is delivered. And most of the watches we receive for servicing are magnetized. They are then placed on a demagnetizer and are relatively quickly free of magnetic fields again. But this is an effort on the part of the customer that we can evade this way. So it's nice that this watch already has this protection. As you've already mentioned, it has a screwed case back. And once again, the beautiful silhouette of an airplane is visible on it. The automatic movement is hidden underneath it. The caliber Laco 330 is based on the Swiss caliber Solida 330-2, which has proven itself time and again. Maybe you can say something about that too. Yes, the movement has been on the market for a long time, made by ETA and Solita. The Solita replica is now common with us in this watch model, has been widely tested and has the great advantage that most watchmakers in the world can maintain and service this watch. Most have spare parts for the watch or can obtain spare parts and are used to handling this movement and can easily repair or even service the movement. And a power reserve of more than 40 hours. Exactly. And furthermore, you can get the movement from us in two quality levels. One quality level is the Elaboré level. This is the level that is available in our standard delivery. And the advanced quality is the quality level top, which can be purchased online in our store as an add-on. The lugs that had always been straight in the original Laco Pilot watches, which was also a very typical earlier design, 
are now curved. You can see it from the side. I don't know whether that makes a difference on the wrist. Based on the feeling, I don't think so, because I'm also used to wearing the originals from Laco, which have straight lugs. They basically feel the same on the wrist. The look is a bit different. The watch looks sleeker on the wrist. It fits the wrist better, but that's purely a matter of optics. In terms of wearing comfort, this does not make much of a difference to the originals. But visually, you have a more harmonious, smoother watch on your wrist. The price for the Frankfurt GMT is 1,650 euros. The watch comes in a very fancy flat aluminum box. This is what it looks like when the box arrives. So the watch in the Nitex strap that you're wearing right now in the leather look and the textile strap in gray and orange is right up here. Here's the additional strap which you can order if you like. A strap change tool and for the real Laco fans among you, a keychain. And if you'd like to personalize your watch, you can do so with an engraving. The first engraving is free, and for the second one, you need to pay an upcharge. auch machen mit einer Gravur. Die erste Gravur gibt's kostenlos dazu, und bei der zweiten muss man dann Exactly. Whereas a second engraving is difficult here. The first engraving can be applied on the side, but because the back has already been designed and printed on, and because it's not a crystal case back, it makes little sense to engrave the rotor, but we could do it. Now some of you might probably ask yourselves, how do you actually set a watch? Because we've talked about it so much now. I've shot a separate video about that and it is linked for you here. You're welcome to click on it and drop by. We've already reached the end of this talk. Thank you so much for being here. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Thank you for watching and goodbye. See you next time. Thank you very much.